To start your digital painting, you want to create a new image at pixlr.com slash editor. You can hit OK. And then the next step you're, want to, you're going to want to do is go to Layer, and then open an image as a layer. This should be a file that was already uh, saved to your desktop. And I have this Matisse image here. I'm going to open that image, and it's a little bit larger than the size that I want to work in. So the layer one being selected, I'm going to go to edit and free transform. Now I have some selection box on the sides of my rectangle of the image, the portrait by Matisse. I'm going to hold down the shift and just minimize it a little bit and relocate it to the center of the page. If you don't hold down shift, you're not going to keep the constraints correct. I'm going to select yes, I want to apply those changes, and now I'm going to make a new layer. A shortcut to make a new layer is found in the bottom right corner of the layer screen. I'm going to select that to make layer 2. Now all of the color that I add is going to be painted because it's a, it's a digital painting, so we shouldn't be in the pencil tool. When I want to select a color, I could double select and double click and move my dots around this rainbow circle to find certain colors. But that will take a long time for the whole painting that we have to do. So I'm going to cancel. And instead, I'm going to go to this tool. This tool is called the Color Picker tool. It's like a little eyedropper. If you select that and drag it over and select a certain area of the painting, it will actually find that color digitally. So if I move over to the blue, it'll find the blue. If I move to the green, yellow, above the nose, it'll find that color. So it's really, really handy, especially when we have painting with lots of different shades of a color. I'm going to start in the background. I'm going to select my color, and I'm going to go to brush. Now the different types of brushes that you could choose are located as defaults right about here. Now you'll see that I have quite a few brushes below that. Those selections are found under More. If you select More, It'll allow you to choose many different brushes, some from nature, some from shapes. So we're going to stick with artistic. And then there are different brushes within there. Dirt, smudge, splatter, those are all great tools. I don't have the dirt yet, so I will add that. And it just adds it to my file. I can see them right here at the bottom. Now these, if I select them and I go off in this space, you can see they're rather large. Not a whole lot of control. That's demonstrated at this number right here. That's their size. Now I can go in and I can shrink that size if I still want to use that same tool. I'm actually going to go up here a little bit. I'm going to select one of these smudge tools. I'm going to just click outside of the box. Now my tool is selected. I have my color selected. I want to make sure I'm on layer 2 and now I'm ready to start painting. Now within this space I could select new colors or different shades of that color but it's really just one solid background. This area in the blue would be a space I may want to start changing my colors as I paint. So I use my color select tool and then back to my brush. And I'm just going to keep that same brush active. To check your work, you can deselect the image and you can kind of see your progress. I'm going to fill in a little bit more in these spaces just so I can see it. I can bring the image back and should pick a darker shade. Now this background I'm doing first, that way when I make a new layer for the portrait, the face, everything will lay behind the new color I lay down, which will help with the process along the way. Now you'll see up here there's an option for opacity. This is where I can make a color its full darkness, or I can make it a little bit more transparent. This is really great for shading. For my purposes in this really dark area, I am going to pick that darker shade just to fill in the color. I will go over it later with some more darkness. This process is continued over the entire portrait. And you can be selective if you choose. I'm going to make a new layer for the portrait. You can be selective right at the beginning as far as like how you start to lay down the color. and then slowly your colors will start to pile up and layer and you'll start to see the face coming through. Now there's also an option to create brushes and this is really great if you're wanting a really large brush with a very 
distinct hardness or maybe a really soft outline. You can change the amount of angles that are on that one shape, and it's a little bit easier, I think, to harden. You can change the angle of it. So if I were to use that brush, um, it would be located right down at the bottom, right here. So if you just continue this all around the painting, until you have a picture that represents the image that you have. As a final detail, there are two tools you could use, the dodge and the burn tool. The burn tool, when applying it to a certain area, let's do a, a box of color just so you can see a little bit better. I could take this tool and if I go on top of it, it should, maybe not, let's see. You can see it on the picture. If I go over this photograph, you can see how it's making it darker. If I use the dodge tool, it'll make it lighter. So if I make my brush a little bit larger, it can make it lighter in those areas. When you're starting to go in and shade, these could be areas that help you smooth out the differences between your colors to make an even shade. That is a technique you could use eventually. You can also eyedropper certain colors you've already set down and so on. So lots of possibilities for a detailed painting.